In our first community conversation, we're joined by Dr. Jeff Wilson, an allergist and immuno immunologist at UVA Health. He's sitting down with Casey. All right, thank you so much, Steve. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Yeah, we're happy to have you. And we are talking today about alpha-gal syndrome. Um, for people who might not know about this, what is it? What does it cause? Uh, thank you, Casey. So alpha-gal syndrome is a name we often use to describe this rather unusual allergy to red meat. Mm -hmm. And there's a few reasons we use the word alpha-gal syndrome. Uh, one is there's other causes of red meat allergies. So this is a specific one. Um, and in addition, you can, folks who have the allergy, you're allergic to mammalian meat, but you can be allergic to other things too, like dairy, gelatin, and select medical products. Uh, and we use the, the name alpha-gal comes from the fact that it's actually, it's an allergy to a very specific sugar. It's got a technical name of galactose alpha-1,3 galactose, mm -hmm. but a shorthand is alpha-gal. So people who make allergic antibodies to this carbohydrate can have the syndrome. And the syndrome's got some unusual features that make it different from bread and butter food allergy. Uh, oftentimes folks who have alpha-gal, they don't have symptom onset for maybe three to six hours after having a meal, oh, wow. which is unusual. Yeah. Um, there's a whole spectrum of symptoms and we increasingly recognize a lot of folks only have uh, gastrointestinal symptoms mm -hmm. when they have an alpha-gal reaction. And one of the most unusual things about alpha-gal is that the, the thing that instigates it in the first place is tick bites. Mm -hmm. And so it's most allergies obviously aren't caused by tick bites, but alpha-gal is. It's the lone star tick that's the biggest cause. And that's one of the reasons that we have a lot of alpha-gal in our community and in other parts of the Southeast. Yeah, yeah, and you hear a lot of people talking about it. It does seem so unusual and a lot of people are worried about, about getting this. How is this discovered? And so every scientific discovery has got a backstory. Um, the the backstory for, for alpha-gal um, is a lot of the work was actually done here at UVA. Wow. It predated me, but it was in the allergy group uh, led by Dr. Platts Mills uh, and a, a work done about 15 years ago. And part of the interesting backstory is the early work that paved the way had nothing to do with red meat allergy, but it had to do with understanding why there were some individuals, especially in the Southeast, who were having severe allergic reactions the first time they were exposed to a novel cancer drug. Mm -hmm. And the research into that sorted out that that cancer drug had alpha-gal on it, and it was these individuals who had pre-existing allergic antibodies who were reacting, and that, that paved the way. That is wild. I didn't know a lot of the research was done here. What can people do to help reduce their risk for alpha-gal syndrome? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, and so that goes back to the main cause of alpha-gal being tick bites. So really, if you wanna prevent it in the first place, the most important thing is avoiding tick bites. Yeah. Uh, and obviously there's a whole bunch of ways that you, things that you can do to avoid tick bites, but being cognizant if you're walking in the woods or high grass and wearing long pants and long sleeve shirts, mm -hmm. um, doing tick checks, uh, and then there are sprays. So you can apply DEET to your skin or you can apply, uh, apply things like permethrin to your pants or your shoes. Yeah, really important. We have a long tick season here too. So uh, what treatments are available for people who do have this? So unfortunately, there are no cures or silver bullets at this point. And so really the core of management is avoiding your triggers. Mm -hmm. So for most people, this will include avoiding mammalian meat. For some folks who have uh, more of a sensitivity, it can involve avoiding other things like dairy, like gelatin, like select medical products. Yeah. Uh, and so that's the core. Um, there's early research going on seeing if there may be other things, but those things are very early research and none of that, none of those therapies exist that are cures. There is, um, it's, it's pretty interesting, there's the company down the road in Blacksburg who's developed a genetically modified pig which lacks the alpha-gal sugar. And they actually have FDA approval uh, for the pig, uh, but they haven't uh, made that product commercially available yet. So that could be one thing in the future where folks who have the syndrome, if they can get access to this pork, uh, they could still get their bacon. Still enjoy their bacon. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here and telling us about all this today. My pleasure. Yeah, we'll have you back soon. And Steve, back over to you.